How cool is that? Look at that. Beautiful. Even in Essentia. In Essentia's, in Essentia's words were, did you just say, ah, oh, sweet, eh? <laughs> Well, there we go. That's exactly what it is. I don't know how sweet a spider can be. I've never eaten one before. Should we try it? This is not an actual spider, though. It's uh, it's just the exoskeleton. And this is actually a sack spider. And how I seem to talk about sack spiders quite often, mainly because they attack my brother all the time. And I've told you many stories, so I, I shan't bore you anymore with my brother versus sack spider uh, incidents. And Ben, who is only eight years old, you're actually wondering, do we have any spiders? Well, it's like I said, it's not alive, Ben. So this used to be as part of a spider. It's its old skin. So it molted. Now, it's very important. Many different animals out here molt. We see lizards molting. We see snakes molting. We see lots of different insects molting. And then, of course, the arachnids, the spiders, do exactly the same thing. And if they don't molt, they can't grow any bigger. I'm, I'm kind of glad, though, that we don't molt as humans. Can you imagine? That would be terrible. Or a leopard molting. But there is actually a couple of things I really wanted to show you on the microscope, if that's okay, if we can go back there, just so that I can have a look, so I can just talk about a few things. There we go. So the reason how I know that it is a sack spider is very, very easy to, of course, notice if you look at its mandibles. Look at that, completely black, and that is typical of the variety of sack spiders that you get across the globe. And then, of course, they're normally that sort of creamish color. Now, it was quite interesting how a sack spider actually has to shed its skin. It's something um, that I, and to be honest, I, I don't really know too much about, so I apologize in advance. I'm going to try and explain uh, how they do molt, but I, I shall be doing more research to find the proper terms. Uh, so, so yes, I actually have a bit of a phobia of spiders, but this one's okay. So what happens is, I'm going to try and get a stick in here now. No, I think if I try and get a stick in here, it's going to be an absolute disaster. So you can see that it's all hollow and it's just the, the outside of the, the skeleton now. Uh, when they prepare to molt, it's basically like they need to pop out of their own skin. You can imagine, this is um, a very dangerous state too because they can't properly defend themselves when they are molting. So they're, they're vulnerable to predation as well. Anyways, they increase uh, the, the hemolymph. So that's insect blood or spider blood. They don't have blood like you and I have. And um, by doing that, uh, they increase their sort of heart rate as well. And then they're able to burst out of that skin. And then in between the old exoskeleton and the new exoskeleton, it's quite interesting. There's something called molting fluid. I I'm not exactly sure what molting fluid consists of. That's something that I want to do, well, dive into and do a whole lot more research about. But they secrete it. And that's to tr help create a gap between the old and the new exoskeleton. And I, I'm su I suppose it also um, helps with sort of trying to slip out of it a lot easier. And then I thought to myself, what happens to that molting fluid afterwards? Because I've read about the molting fluid before, so I quickly popped it into the interweb, and they said apparently the spider then reabsorbs it, which is quite interesting. But I just found that absolutely fascinating. But you can come back to me now. I thought you'd like to have a look at the sack spider. But remember, you don't actually want to touch this spider at all because they have a cytotoxin so if it does bite you it can cause necrosis of the skin luckily for us you're not probably not going to die from a sack spider bite unless you are completely careless and you just let it get infected then you'll get a secondary infection and that's often uh, what might end up causing you uh, to end up in hospital so so don't do that just keep those wounds nice and clean and it was also a very nice example of the web don't you think you can see why they were called sack spiders. It's a thin, flat web, unlike that small little spider we had in the grass uh, using lots of strands. That one was almost a sheet, and it actually made it in the corner of the tent, but it, well, it wasn't being used anymore. So I disposed of it. We had a look at it for education. Right, let's go.